I've always wondered if you could take a washing machine and convert it into a car, a bike, or a go-kart. Can you incorporate that motor in a go-kart? I'm thinking three horsepower is a good. Wonder how hard it would be to have a go-kart powered by a washing machine motor. Could these motors be good for an electric bike? There are a lot of parameters we need to consider in a mobile application like this. And today I wanna to cover what I consider to be the critical ones, which is speed control, the power requirements, and of course, assuming you don't intend to drag an extension cord behind you, running the motor off of a battery. First up, we have the AC induction motor. I took this motor out of a washing machine. It is rated for one half horsepower. Uh, sometimes these washing machine motors are three quarters of a horsepower. So half horsepower is about 350 watts maybe. The thing you need to know about this is it will not run on DC power. So you're gonna need something to convert the DC for our cart to AC. And that's what we have here is an inverter. These are usually designed to go from 12 volts to 120 volts here in the US. Uh, in other countries, they might go to 240. The key here for the inverter is you need a really large one. The reason for that is because when the motor starts, there's a large surge of current. When you step on the accelerator, the cart is still and the motor is under maximum, uh, is producing its maximum torque at that time. And therefore you're gonna have the highest current coming from your inverter. This particular inverter is a 3000 watt inverter, at least that's the claim. I haven't actually tested it. Uh, sometimes they just outright lie about that number. But if you read the reviews, there's always somebody in there who's tested the inverter and who will tell you what its real capacity is. So keep an eye out for that as well. These guys can get pretty expensive, but I'm gonna show you this setup anyway. I've got my inverter hooked up to the 12 volt battery. The battery is charged. And if we flip this on, you can see the inverter is putting out 112 volts. And that's pretty normal. So let's plug in the motor. So right now we're drawing about 150 watts. And you can see that the high was 431 watts. So that gives you an idea that right at the start, the peak wattage was 430 watts. That's quite a bit higher than what it took while it was running. But let's relock the rotor and see what would happen if you're sitting in a heavy cart and this guy's trying to start. I've got some grip pliers around here somewhere. Oh, these are due. Oh wait, forgot which way the motor was spinning. All right, motor's spinning away from me. So let's lock it down. And now let's see what happens. And I'll step to the side just in case that guy comes flying off of there. Now, what I want you to notice, I don't wanna burn anything up here, but this is exactly what happens. This is supposed to be a 3000 watt inverter. And as you saw, it peaked at, I think the last number I saw was 1500. Let's go back here. Oh, it's gone now. Uh, I can go back on the camera and review the number that peaked up there, but you can see there was a huge surge of current. The inverter shared off, even though this guy claims to put out 3000 watts. Anyway, this option does not work. You need a massive, and I mean massive inverter in order to compensate for the starting current from your induction motor. Uh, one other thing I need, I want to point out, a half horsepower, 350 watts, uh, average running power at full load is really low. And if an inverter can't handle a motor this small, AC motors in general, I think, are not an option at all. And in, in my opinion, you're going to spend so much on the inverter, you might as well get a motor that's rated to run on DC between 12 and 48 volts. There's one more nail in the coffin for this motor, and that is speed control. The AC induction motor is extremely difficult to control the speed because they run off of line frequency and you need expensive equipment in order to change the line frequency and change the speed of your motor. Uh, you need to be able to change gears quite literally, and I think that makes the system way more complicated than it needs to be. Any kind of AC motor that needs an inverter I think is a terrible choice and I wouldn't bother trying to do that. Related to that is the universal motor. 
Now, this is a tiny one, but obviously there are bigger universal motors. Universal motors are unique in that they can run on both AC and DC. But uh, looking at the size of the wire, it is not designed to handle the kind of current that you will need at low voltage. So even though this guy will run off of 12 volts, uh, you're not gonna have very much power. The universal motor, I think, is out. And that leaves us with DC motors. So before we move on to the treadmill motor, which I have here, I just remembered that I saw a video on YouTube where a guy took a car starter and put that on a go-kart. Uh, a go a car starter is a universal motor, but it has been wired for low voltage, so it can handle uh, very high currents in order to turn the motor over in large vehicles. Uh, there's another uh, YouTube video, which is pretty popular, where a guy took a car alternator and rewired it so that it was basically a three-phase DC motor. You are essentially taking an alternator which has been optimized to be a generator and reversing it to operate as a motor. It won't be as efficient, but it will work. And if I remember correctly, uh, he was able to get his uh, go-kart, which is much smaller than the one I have, by the way. But he said he got about 30 kilometers an hour, which is something like 12 to 14 miles per hour. So about the speed of a typical golf cart. Uh, I'm not gonna try to replicate that because his videos are pretty exhaustive and I'll put a link in the description and uh, you can watch that and see what you think about his application of that. Next up, we have our permanent magnet DC motor. This one uh, is 2.25 horsepower, but that's at 4,800 RPM. So it's important to keep in mind that when you're reading horsepower ratings, it's a factor of both torque and speed. So for the same horsepower, if you have a lot of speed, it means you have very little torque and vice versa. If you have a lot of torque, you have very little speed. So I've hooked it up to my um, DC power supply here that I made in the shop. And I'll put a link in the video for you so that you can watch that if you wanna make something like this yourself. I wanna show you what happens when you try to operate this guy at 12 volts. I'm gonna lock the rotor like I did the other one. And let's see what happens. So I'm drawing 16.5 amps right now, 250 watts. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down because I don't want this guy to overheat. So here's the problem. Uh, at the low voltage, this motor has very little torque. So your cart's not gonna move. But even if you increase the voltage, let's say we doubled it to 24, you're also gonna increase the current when the motor starts. The problem with that is this motor is designed to operate at about 16 amps. So if you double the amps, the wires are gonna get too hot. These, these wires are way too thin in order to drive a go-kart. And you can't rewire the wires that are hardwired on the inside. So this motor, again, is just not a good fit for a go-kart application. If you put 130 volts worth of batteries on your cart, it's gonna be ridiculously heavy. And the money you spent buying batteries, you should have just bought a motor that was designed to operate at a lower voltage with much thicker wires so it can handle the higher current. So this is another fail. I don't think this guy will work in a go-kart application. All right, next up, we have a 24 volt DC motor. Uh, this is a permanent magnet DC motor, which I took out of a scooter wheelchair. And this is an obvious candidate, right? It's already used in a mobile device. It's designed to operate with two batteries. And as you can see, it's got a gearbox on the end so that it can convert the speed into enough torque to get the cart moving. I can't stress that enough that gears don't give you free energy and neither do pulleys. If you increase the speed, you're gonna give up torque. So some people think that, oh, well, you can fix your speed problem by just using gears. But what you end up with is a lot of speed and not enough torque to actually move. So if you lift the wheels up, they spin really fast, and when you put it on the ground, it doesn't go anywhere. So anyway, uh, typically what you do is you get a motor that's got a higher speed, and then you drop that down with gears to get the turning force you need to go forward. Now, this guy comes from a granny wheelchair. You know, they don't move very fast. Let me show you.
If you take the 150 RPM here, you multiply that by the circumference of your wheel, then uh, convert that to miles per hour, and you will get an idea of how fast you can go. So it's not gonna be very fast, but this will have enough torque to move a relatively small cart. So this will certainly work. And again, without the gearbox, the motor spins at 3,150 RPM. Now, just to give you a comparison, I'm gonna power this guy at 24 volts and let's see what the speed is. So right now we've got a speed of 830 and you can compare that to 3,100 RPM that this guy has without a gearbox. Now, if you took the same gearbox and put it on this, you're gonna have a go, you're gonna have a go kart that's barely moving. So that's the thing I want you to pick up here is even if you use the gearbox on this motor here, uh, the speed is gonna be so low, it's not gonna be worth it. So that's, this one's just not a good option. And this one, of course, is designed for that application. And so you're gonna get moderate speed, but it will definitely work. And you won't have to worry about it overheating or anything like that. Now, let me show you the motor that I actually bought for this. Finally, we have this guy. This is a 48 volt, three horsepower motor. Uh, it comes off of an electric cart, which makes sense because this is pretty much the primary application you're gonna find these kind of motors. That would be like electric forklifts and uh, electric carts. If you are willing to take the time to look, you can find a motor like this. So I'm gonna put a little bit of work into this, but it was definitely worth it. If you're talking about like an electric bike or something uh, much smaller, then you might be able to get away with something in the one and a half horsepower range. You know, I don't know, maybe a two horsepower, 1400 watts, 1500 watts, something like that. But if you are gonna be pushing a cart, especially if you're talking about one as big as the one that I have, which is a two person cart, two person adult cart, then you want, you want at least three horsepower or more. In fact, I'm still looking for something closer to 10 horsepower so that I can get some good speed. One last topic to talk about, and that is speed controllers. So this guy, not all of this, but this is a speed controller that uh, was originally used with the motor you just saw. Over here, we have a, a, a switching contactor that'll uh, switch from forward and reverse. So I may be able to salvage that part, but these other components I think are, are no good. I wanted to show you this because you are gonna need a speed controller that matches your motor. If you go on eBay or you go to one of those scooter go-kart places, you could be purchasing either a brushed DC motor or a brushless, and you, make, you gotta make sure your speed controller matches the motor that you buy. There are brushless speed controllers, and then there are brushed speed controllers. You can overvolt your motor, which is what I intend to do, Instead of operating it at 48 volts, I'm also going to try to operate it at 60 volts and see how much more speed and power I get. There's some precautions you got to take with that though because the motor is going to get much hotter and it's going to reduce the duty cycle. Uh, I don't want to get into that too much in this video except to say that as you increase the current, you increase the heat and that can potentially damage the wires inside the motor if they're not rated to handle that or they're going to be rated to handle it for a certain amount of time. So if your motor is continuous duty at 48 volts and then you operate it at 60 volts, it might only be safe to operate it for an hour at that voltage. In my case, you're probably only gonna be riding for 15 to 30 minutes maybe, depending upon your batteries. And so I just need a duty cycle that's about 30 minutes long. Um, so I'm gonna experiment and try to figure that out, but you gotta do that at your own risk. I'm not telling you to do that. If you're gonna overvolt your motor like I am, then your speed controller needs to match the actual voltage you're running at. So, I've already started to remove the gasoline engine that was attached to this guy. And as you can probably tell from the pictures, this guy definitely needs some TLC and uh, probably a color change as well. Uh, hopefully you found that information helpful. Uh, I will be uh, adding some additional notes to the description, so be sure to check that. And if I've made any technical errors, I will add that stuff to the description. Uh, once my parts come in and I'm ready to drive this guy around, I'll post an update video and let you guys see how it turned out. Until then, thanks for watching.